So I'm joined with Yara Rosner Manor, who is a urban planning lecturer and program manager uh, at the Hebrew University of uh, Jerusalem. And Yara, you and I have a good colleague in common, uh, my good friend Yadam Lafay. Uh, mm -hmm. And I understand that you and he have been doing research uh, on uh, Bedouin uh, settlements and the issues that that population is challenged by. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your work? Of course. Uh, I would just mention that uh, when I'm a PhD student, Yadam Lafay is my supervisor. And what we're doing together is we're trying to map the original code, the Bedouin code, uh, assuming that every human system would be a complex system, and therefore every human settlement that have been emerged by the community must have some sort of internal order, and this order probably is a complex order. And therefore what we are trying to do is to map this internal order of the unrecognized Bedouin villages in the southern part of Israel, and within this work, we learn that there are sub, some sub-orders within this system, but now we can absolutely point and map the full system of the unrecognized Bedouin villages in Israel. And surprisingly, they are all built according to the same mutual code. So it is a very distinguished system, and it is very organized. So that's, that's basically well, the research. That's a fantastic research, and I, I think the lessons are um, not just applied to the Bedouin community, right? That's a very universal kind of um, order that exists in many different communities around the world. Yeah, so I've come to this conference trying to invite the research right now because this is the end of the PhD and now we're looking for widening optioning options. And therefore, uh, well, we don't know yet if we can find these kind of orders in other places. We assume we do, but we don't have enough data and we don't have enough research and I actually came here looking for this data, looking for these um, links of information. Maybe somebody else is doing something similar. Maybe some of the other researchers could contribute and we can cooperate. Maybe there are interesting test cases out there that we can look at, etc. So this is exactly, it's my first time here in Africa and the first time here in a conference. So. Well, one of the challenges it seems to me is it's not only the lack of data, uh, but also the way of thinking, right? The older way of thinking is much more about uh, coming in in a command and control mode and uh, applying uh, financing, applying resources, applying technical know-how, instead of doing what you're talking about, which is learning about the innate order that's there and how to um, work with that and empower that. Um, do you find that happening and are people beginning to change the way they're thinking or, or, or do we still have a long way to go, do you think? Well, here in the conference I do hear a lot about southern perspective. I think that understanding the internal order of the existing settlements which have been made and emerged by their own inhabitants and therefore they by definition reflect the very, very actual needs of the population because if you are so poor and this is what you, cho you choose to do, then this is very important and this is very relevant. And looking from southern perspective for me would be first of all to understand what we're observing and then to think together with the population and which this is exactly what we do in Israel and then to think together with the population what, what's next. What would be the next stage? And I can say, according to the Israeli experience, that at the end of the day, yes, it is a master plan. It is a master plan at the, at the end of the day, but it looks totally different than the original one that came top down, according to the Western point, point of view. So yes, we are in the right direction. Yes, we are in the very beginning. <laughs> and as you say, it, it is a master plan, but it's a different way of thinking about a master plan. Absolutely. Right? different way of thinking about design, perhaps, designing with self-organization, if Absolutely. you Absolutely. And the other thing we discovered is that, okay, we are, the formal result would be a master plan, but during the process, so many other sub-processes are happening when you work with communities in the right way, which was influenced very much by you and Christopher Alexander and the other groups that are working in this direction, and yes, it works. It absolutely works, and things are emerging all the time, all around, but then again, I would say that the Israeli experience is, is small. We're talking about dozens of thousands of people, not about millions or so far. Well, we had uh, several interviews with um, 
people who are working with informal settlements all over Africa, which was fascinating, and also very much along the lines you're talking about of empowering self-organization, empowering data in the community, um, not just applied to the community from the outside by mm -hmm. experts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it seems to me there are a lot of lessons here that we're hearing at the conference. Are there any particular things that you notice that have been discussed or, or uh, uh, insightful takeaways? Well, there have been many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know where to start. I, I haven't, you know, summarized it. I'm into it um, so far, but uh, let's think about the conference. Uh, yes, we had a very interesting uh, group roundtable yesterday that were people who are dealing mainly with urban ecology and other ways of thinking about the term rural and other ways of thinking about the term urban, which Southern's perspective definitely would give us a different vocabulary that we should come up with to talk about, about African cities. So that was fascinating. Uh, some of the keynotes talking about very enthusiastic entrepreneurships of all kinds, sorts of placemaking, but not really. A lot of art streets, a lot of things that are being made by communities for themselves with a little bit of help from the outside, but not really. Um, all of those things have been very inspiring. We've been working with your colleague, Yodan, as we were just talking about earlier, uh, on some of his work on urban morphology and self-organization and his collaboration with uh, Sergio Porta mm -hmm. uh, on what Sergio calls plot-based urbanism. Yeah. The idea that there are property lines, there are cadastral plans, there are uh, master plans, as you said, and yet they're not static things. They evolve and they follow uh, these inherent rules that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I wonder how much you're getting involved in that work, because we're certainly fascinated by that at the center. Well, I'm only observing, I'm not involving so far, uh, but I can say, uh, at least again for the Israeli sphere, that we do say that we, we do look at those emergent uh, systems in the Bedouin villages, but also in the Arab villages and also in East Jerusalem, that they are all plot-based thinking. They are all uh, step by step, bit by bit. We need this now, so we are going to locate this building and then the other one and then the other one and then the other one. And the disadvantage is that their system do not have the capacity to think for the very, very long run, do not have the capacity to, to maintain big plots for big uses like community centers, like public, space. like public space, but really public. And this is maybe something that we, we as a Western, Northern, can con contribute, actually. We found exactly that issue with public space because, uh, for, for example, back to informal settlements, uh, people think that they're just people put their house wherever they have plot lines. They have, exactly. uh, you know, uh, they tend to have developers who are these sort of cowboy developers, if you will, who come in and create the cadastral plan illegally and then, you know, sell off the pieces. And they have an incentive not to create public spaces. So we're losing the public spaces in the informal exactly. settlements. We're also losing them in the market rate developments because of privatization, the shopping malls, gated communities, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me this issue of how the plots are arranged around different scales, and particularly around the public realm, seems so fundamentally important. And that's one of the things I'm, I'm excited about Yodan's and Sergio's work. Yes, I, I, I agree that this is definitely the challenge. And may I add, do it according to the very local code is another challenge, but it is a very important challenge to tackle. Because if we don't do it according to the, to the uh, local code, we might do such a horrible mistakes. Either waste the little amount of land that we already have for public uses, we are wasting it because the public cannot really use it. That's one option. And the other option is even worse, that you know, everything turns into chaos because you misread reality. So, yeah. <laughs> That's very true, and I, I think you guys are doing wonderful work. Uh, Yara Rosenerman, I thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> thank you. <us. laughs>